Hi guys, it's the Macintosh guy and today we're going to be looking at getting this trusty guy running the latest version of Mac OS Sequoia. So, we're going to be using Open Core Legacy Patcher and let me show you how you guys can do this yourself. The way you have to do this is by going to the Open Core Legacy Patcher. Now, I will be putting the links down below. But what you'll need to do is first of all click on get started and it will show you the steps that you will need. Now because Sequoia is not officially out yet, the best way to get this is from the Mr. Macintosh's installers page and that will give you the latest beta 8 which you can then upgrade to the release candidate version. Now as of this recording Sequoia will be coming out on the 16th so it's better to use the official version than the release candidate. They're both the same but uh, it, it's just if you want better options it's it's always good to just use the official one. Now it will tell you a bunch of things when you scroll down when you click on the macOS Sequoia option just to tell you what is dropped, what's the current status and you know some of the challenges that they still have obviously they said due to the t2 related problems the recently dropped macbook air models they're not supported at all um, and also if you've got the mac pro 2008 and xf 2008 servers you're going to be facing some some issues there as well so just just bear that in mind not everything will be working um, off the bat now what you'll need to do is when you're at the Open Core Legacy Patcher screen, it's important to click to have the download and build macOS installer op guide open all the time. And also it is good to right click on where it says GitHub and open that in a new link. And that will take you to the Open Core Legacy Patcher GitHub page. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to click on releases. So the latest release as of today is 2.0.0. And you'll see that with the release of Turin, they're proud to announce that Sequoia is officially supported and it actually supports 83 unsupported machines off the bat. So that's great. From day one, we've already got support for the latest operating system for our unsupported machines. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to scroll all the way to the end until you see the Open Core Legacy Patcher GUI app.zip file. So you'll need to download this. And this will create a zip, it will download a zip folder. And all you'll need to do is unzip the file and you'll see the open core legacy patch as I've got downloaded right here. So just bear that in mind uh, that you'll need to ensure that this is downloaded. Once you have downloaded the open core legacy patcher app, I strongly suggest you do not install this on your main version of your Mac. Now reason being is I'm running the latest supported version for the Mac Pro 2013. As you can tell right here, I'm running the latest version of Monterey. Now I advise do not install on the same drive. What I would suggest is you partition your current drive. As I show you here, so you open up Disk Utility, you click on your Apple SSD, you click on Partition, and then you just half it and click on Add Parti Partition. Once you've done this, rename it as whatever you want to name it as. So in our instance, I'm going to name it as Sequoia. And then all you'll need to do is just click on Apply. And this will partition the drive for us. So it'll say it will stop the computer from responding. So let's just press Continue and let it start partitioning the drive. You can see we've got the Sequoia partition right here. It's a simple matter of now opening up your Open Core Legacy Patcher. So I've got my Open Core Legacy Patcher right here. And you can tell it's got the latest 2.0.0. And all we need to now do is follow the steps. So it says create the installer. The first thing we will need to do is click on create installer as mentioned here and if you've downloaded the version from Mr. Macintosh you will just simply need to click on use existing macOS installer. Now if you want to download the, the version directly from Open Core Legacy Patcher you can just click on download macOS installer. 
Now in my instance, as I mentioned, I've got the file downloaded. So all I need to just do is click create macOS installer and use a Mac o and use existing macOS installer. Now before you do that, you'll need to make sure you've got a 16 gigabyte or more um, USB stick available and that will allow you to install Mac OS and uh, create a bootable Mac OS Acquire drive. Now I've got mine plugged right in as you can tell I've already <laughs> done this for myself but all you'll need to do is use existing Mac OS installer and it's already picked up the existing beta I have in my folder. You click on that then you click on the drive that you want it to be install it on so as you can tell I've got a cruiser blade drive available right here click on that and it'll say are you sure you want to erase cruiser blade all data will be lost this cannot be undone and we want to click yes what this will do is then go ahead and create a bootable drive for us as I've already said I've already done it for my side I don't need to redo this for you guys but just as I mentioned 16 gig or more drive is needed for this I strongly suggest you use a drive which has got 32 gigabytes because of the size of Mac OS um, that should now be the, the core minimum in my opinion you need to do is go back to the guide and go on building and installing open core and simply all we will need to do is run the new open core legacy patch as we've got right here so we're back to the main menu and all we then need to do is click on build and install open core now this is very simple we just need to click on open core and then it will say finish building your open core configuration as it mentions here on when it's on the finished building start process it says we need to click on install to disk and that's what exactly what we're going to do and this is the very important part. We want to select the disk that we want this to be installed on. And we want it to be installed on the Apple SSD. So you click on the Apple SSD. And then it will say volumes on the disk, which is this one right here. And then it will start applying the patches. Now, you know, it's saying right here that OpenCore has finished installing to disk. You'll need to reboot and hold the options key and select the open core boot EFI option. Would you like to reboot? So I'm going to end the screen recording right here and I'm going to jump to my phone and show you guys what needs to happen. But you'll need to click on reboot and hold the options key on your keyboard to be able to boot it to the EFI option. So I'll show you guys that the EFI boot screen in the next clip so guys as you can tell we're now at the boot picker after holding options down and we can see that we see Mac OS Sequoia beta installer we just need to click on enter on that and it will take a couple of minutes as it needs to initialize and understand that look it, I want to be able to install a Sequoia onto the Mac OS 6,1 and as you can see now we see a line at the bottom and it's now trying to boot the operating systems install page uh, which is the where you can install you can do things with the disk utility so let's just wait until this boots up So now that we're at the recovery, I guess, page, Mac OS likes to call it, you'll see that you can now, you have four options available to you. You see restore from time machine, install Mac OS Sequoia Beta, Safari, and Disk Utility. Now, one of the interesting things you will see is the Wi-Fi icon will have an exclamation mark through it. Don't worry, guys. We've got the patch up for that. It will bring everything back up. So all we now need to do is just go through installing Mac OS Sequoia. So we click on Mac OS Sequoia Beta, we click on Continue. And bear in mind, it will be a little laggy. It's because not everything is available yet 
all the machines. So you click on continue. And you can already see a spinning beach ball. So just give it a second, guys. And as I mentioned, none of the root patches have been installed yet for the beta. Um, and obviously that's what we have to do once Mac OS Sequoia gets to the, it, well, you know, when we boot into the operating system, we will eventually be able to install all the patches. You click on agree, you click on agree again, and then it's important to choose your drive. So as I mentioned, I created a Sequoia uh, drive. I click on Sequoia, and I, I highly recommend having a separate drive for your new Mac OS partition. Do not, and I strongly suggest you do not do it over your existing drive, your existing partition. Like I've got one tray running on Macintosh HD. Reason being is we want to have a clean install. So you click on Sequoia, you click continue, and then it will start installing the Mac OS version on the disk. So guys, I'm going to let the video just play and fast forward this until we get to the setup screen. So guys, we're now finally at the boot screen for Mac OS Sequoia, and you can already tell it's it's got a white background going on, and this is mainly because of the fact that none of the patches have applied. So let me go through the installation process, and let's get straight into the boot screen. So as you guys can see, as soon as we boot it into the operating system, we get a message to say that it wants to install some root patches. So we click OK. And as you can tell, Open Core Legacy Patch will open up and it's now downloading the KDK build for our version. Uh, as you can tell, it's around 799 megabytes. Uh, so it'll be quite quick. Now these root patches is what's gonna allow us to be able to use the, the, the functionality of Sequoia. And you can see the background and everything will start working once these root patches have been installed. So let's just let it download. As you can tell my internet is quite speedy, so it's getting everything done very quickly. It's now validating the KDK files. You can see the root patching is, is happening currently. And it, again, the Open Core Legacy team is just an amazing team to allow your old machines to just run fluidly. Um, it, and again, guys, it, you have to give your respect to those developers. This, they're, they're spending their own hard-earned time doing this for us, and it's a very big shout out to them. And a lot of the Mac community, Mr. Macintosh, he helps out quite a lot as well. So a lot of shout outs to these uh, to these hardworking people and you know if you want to donate to the open core legacy team i absolutely suggest you do as they are doing this for free for us um, but yeah just a quick message support the community as much as you can and we should be nearing the end for the root patching let's just give it a couple of seconds um, and it's it's going to be as simple as that guys as soon as the root patching is done we will start to just reboot the machine as it instructs us to. And we're pretty much good to then use the OS.
and there you go all we now simply need to do is just click on reboot and we can uncheck this and restart now one thing to just bear in mind it might not boot straight into Sequoia it might boot into your original partition don't worry if that's the case just shut down your machine hold the options key and boot into the Sequoia um, partition but as you can tell it's just done it automatically here it's found the Sequoia partition by itself and it's just going to look boot it straight in now as far as I'm aware it's around 35 seconds or so um, to boot in so let's just see how long it takes us as far and, it, and again a lot of hard-working devs have been working on this and, and the community has really banded across to ensure that you know everyone is is going to be able to support their older machines again also want to give a shout out to Jesse's flying um, he also has a lot of good tutorials and videos and information about Sequoia and the unsupported machines. But as you can see, guys, we are now able to see the background for Sequoia. So if we type in our password, let's see what happens. But it's already a positive sign. We can now see the background of our machine and there you go guys we are now fully booted in let's just click on the apple logo about this mac and there you go guys we are now running version 15.0 of mac os sequoia now this is the beta build but to be able to install the next version which is the release candidate it's as simple as going into software update and then updating to the latest version as you can straight away now for you it might not show up immediately you might need to toggle the option but it should show up eventually now as you can tell i typed my password incorrectly and that's done but you'll see the updates show up on this panel as you would normally upgrade your mac os machine but guys this is how you install mac os sequoia on mac pro 2013 you'll be able to do this with the final release version which comes out tomorrow on the 16th but guys like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial and i will catch you guys all in the next one <laughs>